First, let me introduce Frank Hamlin and Sumit Kumar, who are joining me today live in Dallas and over video from Dubai. Frank Hamlin is currently a board member for Tuesday Morning. Frank formerly has been an EVP and Chief Customer Officer at GameStop, an EVP and Chief Marketing Officer at tailored brands, such as, which includes Men's Warehouse, Joseph A. Bank, Joseph Avowed, an EVP and General Manager at Guitar Center. And he's served clients at some marketing agencies such as Briley and Partners, Emiles, and E-Rewards. Throughout this impressive career, Frank has always faced the challenge of how to build customer relationships based on trust, based on emotion, based on personalized experiences and value. And let's not just talk about his work. Frank is currently writing a novel. He's playing bass in, a, in two semi-professional bands, and he's painting portraits of people's dogs. Sumit Kumar is a pioneer in global loyalty and extremely passionate about the power of loyalty to build meaningful relationships, as I'm sure you'll see from his interview today. Sumit has held strategic roles with brands and large conglomerates such as Marks and Spencer, Bata Group, Landmark Group, El Futam, and Athena Education. Sumit currently lives in Dubai with his family, and he's also lived across Europe, India, Asia, and the Middle East. He likes to say that his experiences in living have taught him one very important thing. We are all one, part of the same cosmic system, and glued at the heart. He is passionate about building the everlasting emotional connections rather than simply transactional bonds. Frank. Jim, really great to see you, man. Great to see you. Thank, yeah. you, thank you for joining us. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, thank you. Frank Sumit, thank you so much for participating in our Capillary Loyalty Masterclass. As you know, loyalty and rewards programs are everywhere. Your favorite restaurant has one, hotels, airlines, every retailer, and now every industry has them. The concept of brand loyalty is now just as popular for B2B and direct-to-consumer CPG type companies and manufacturing companies. So you've both had the opportunity to work with so many unique brands throughout your career and have seen the loyalty space evolve greatly over time. Let's start with a historical view. What would you say are some of the industry firsts that helped pave the way for the loyalty programs we know today? It's interesting. I, I um, and I'm gonna age myself here. I, I, one of my favorite shows growing up on PBS was a show called Connections. And it was one of these shows where they would, sh it was a bit of chaos theory, where they would start with, uh, you know, an event in history way back when, and it moves all the way forward to the development of the iPhone and the connections that lie in between and how kind of meandering those are. I think loyalty has developed in a very similar way. And these programs are have kind of stand on the shoulders of each giant and they progress uh, as a result of that. The first example of that, I think uh, I, I had the benefit of working under Hal Brierley, one of the pioneers in the loyalty space. Uh, and learned a lot from him around the first true real loyalty program, I think, was SNH Green Stamps. Uh, and it was a consortium program amongst the uh, grocery stores. And folks would shop at grocery stores and they would earn stamps and they could redeem those stamps for tchotchkes. Uh, and in how had, had expressed when they developed the American Airlines program and miles and that whole notion, it was a notion, Bob Crandall, I think the, the, the pioneer at, at the CEO at, at American who developed that, um, they relied on the notion of green stamps at the first development of American's program. And then I think as you express that forward, you've got the Hertz number one club gold, which was one of the very first sort of customer experience programs. Uh, using recognition uh, as a key element and using uh, a much faster friction-free form of service as the point of loyalty uh, and that you know you can you can see that in in uh, programs like Sephora right now um, where it's really getting to know each individual customer uh, what their makeup needs are, have that stuff in the data so that when you walk in, it's a very intuitive uh, piece of service. And then finally, you know, um, you, you know, Starbucks built on American, you have uh, Amazon Prime to me is very much derivative of the clubs, the Costco's, et cetera. And uh, it's just super interesting to see how the similarities from history have progressed forward. Um, technology obviously being the big, big 
uh, notion that, that's brought these things into the future. I love that you brought up SNH green stamps because uh, I actually used to go shopping with my mom and I loved when she'd come home and I'd get this put the stamps in the book and we were thrilled when we achieved an, an award. Yeah. Um, Sumit, so Sumit, thank you for joining us from Dubai. What's uh, your perspective uh, on this? Thanks, Jim. You know, you talked about historical views, so let me get back into history slightly. Um, I'll, I'll talk about me growing up, going with my dad to the local butcher's shop, where that old butcher would always know what cut to be given, what cut to be, what is the kind of meat that my dad would like. He will obviously highlight what has come in fresh, um, you know, and what, what you can do with it. But more importantly, he will know my dad's taste. He will know what, what, would be, what will really click. And he'll go about his business packet, my dad not bothering about um, what he's been actually served. And he'll be busy talking about many other things from what's happening in the world uh, to political issues and to what the economy is shaping up like. And me, like a small kid, will keep on watching this interaction uh, with big eyes. Uh, I, I remember clearly also that when I used to walk out with my dad with the bag in our hand, he would, this old butcher will come over and give me a small candy creating a delight for me as well. And I think what 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 will happen is whenever next I would want to go or whether my dad would want to go and buy meat and meat products, uh, we will. I will always think about that butcher's shop. Uh, and you know, and my dad would certainly go there as well. Not that he is not, but when we're different city, we're talking and we're visiting, I will always connect it with that butcher. That's the kind of imprint of an informal loyalty that was stayed with me and that's that's my historic take on how you connect with a customer and bring about that experience and bring about that loyalty connect in a much more informal way. However, builds that kind of a trust and loyalty with that brand. The evolution obviously has been tremendous. You can look at how it started from an informal interaction to more formal where every visit will get rewarded, where you'll get earn and burn points. And these points would mean actual currency you will get into more birthday gifts and experiential rewards that have now paved the way of, of touching beyond just a transaction in the store uh, or on that shopping experience. So I think the evolution has been phenomenal and, and this is the constant. It will continue to evolve with technology paving the way uh, and making it easier, impactful uh, and creating an everlasting bond.